is the role of peers in relation to aggressive behaviour. By that I mean the necessity to be part of the group, the protection that one gets from being within the group, the impressing of peers, the following of powerful leaders, and, and the overall role of popularity or social power. But we also uh, indicated that we did a social study where, where girls were actually more, const more constructive in their forms of conflict resolution. And uh, what, so what we argued was that these same peer processes can be utilised in resolving conflict. So just very briefly, I'm going to introduce you to two small-scale studies where we've been doing some intervention. And for this, uh, I've been working with my colleague Jill Huntley, who is uh, Director of Student Services in a school, uh, a secondary school in Metropolitan Adelaide, uh, or a, a counsellor in schools. So she's the person who actually uh, has to try to help the kids to problem solve a lot of the difficulties they have uh, when they're having difficulties in their peer relationships. Now, um, in the first, what, what, uh, what Jill uses is a narrative therapy approach, and uh, it's on the screen. Basically, in this approach, people are the experts on their own lives and have the ability to solve their own problems. So it's, it's humanistic, it takes a, a positive view of, of the capacity of human beings. But sometimes crises overwhelm them, people, so that they are disempowered. So what the narrative counsellor does is the role is to shine a spotlight on the areas of difficulty and enable participants to name and explore the problems and construct alternative pathways to empower them to move on from that problem. That is, the narrative counsellor um, gets, helps the kids to construct an alternative story that enables them to link into their own skills, knowledges, knowledge and abilities. Now, this, in this case, now she works, Jill, Jillian works with a lot of, of boys and girls, but in this case we're thinking about girls who have peer relationship difficulties, who have been victimised. And what she did in this case was, um, uh, what we've actually done in this case, is written one of these up into a case study. And for the, for the sake of this case study, we call the girl Jana, 17 year old, in this uh, middle class senior secondary college. And she was really in a very dysfunctional and abusive friendship group. She was having trouble with her schoolwork and she was having trouble in her family as well. Now, in her friendship group, there was all the things that I've described earlier. There was bitching and gossiping and whispering and speaking badly about her when she wasn't present and she was being excluded from the group. So what we're saying is what is done in the name of friendship can be profoundly abusive. She, she was still hanging on to this friendship group even as badly as they were treating her. Um, now, this group process of interaction that was occurring, um, Jill got, in, through the narrative approach, got her to name the behaviours. And this has a healing function, um, so that the kids see it, it's not themselves, but a series of behaviours by others that, that is actually the problem. So she finished up naming the process in three ways, as abusive, as competitive and as manipulative. And uh, under abusive, it, it included things like betraying her, spreading her secrets around, ignoring her at school, spreading rumours about her, threatening to bash her. Under the heading of competitive, she included items like being jealous of her achievements and things she owns, make, trying to make themselves sound and look better than her. And uh, under manipulative, they quite often got help from her, but uh, when, when she sought help from them, they weren't available for her. Anyway, there's a lot more detail in it, but um, in the end, uh, what Jill was able to do through this narrative therapy approach was to get to the skills and to unlock the skills that the individual child had to develop an alternative story, an alternative story which was about respectful friendships and what, what they would contain. So the girl said that those respectful friendships would contain those things, no put-downs, sharing and giving support, accepting you for who you are, keeping secrets, not, not breaking confidences, not spreading stories about you behind your back, being comfortable with, with each other. What happened then is, as a result of naming these behaviours, the young woman became aware of sarcasm and, uh, and was able to ignore it. She didn't listen to the put-downs. She, she 
developed the strength not to be affected by other people's immature behaviour, and she was able to take a stand for herself and have a voice. The outcome was that she gradually withdrew from that dysfunctional group. She found new strength in herself. Her confidence did return. Her schoolwork improved. And she was confident enough that she was able to go out and find other more respectful friendships that she was looking for. And she, and she did that. And uh, it's an, it was an amazing turnaround uh, through that particular process. Now, what Jill M did was, and uh, we've written this up for, for this conference actually, uh, she used as a basis uh, those um, three types of, of um, behaviours that in the Jhana case, abusive, competitive and manipulative, as virtually a starting point to work with um, a large group of, of um, year nine girls, 14 year olds. Now these were, she had a lot of complaints by these girls and by their teachers because these peer groups were riven by conflict where kids were spreading rumours about each other, bitching about each other, excluding each other and betraying each other. So Jill, as the counsellor, went to the group and engaged them in a participatory action research process informed by narrative, narrative theory. Now the narrative therapy approach, well in, in, in essence, as I said, this process that she engaged in was informed by narrative practices. It was inclusive, collaborative and respectful of the voices of adolescent girls the girls were able to identify the problems in their peer relationships and worked out solutions. Um, now, it was a three-stage cyclical process of interviews and analysis of data, but as a result, the girls actually developed strategies for managing the conflict in their friendship groups in more respectful ways. What the study highlighted was that adolescent girls' own knowledge, creativity and ability to negotiate their way through peer conflict thereby creating an alternative story for these girls, one that was not debilitated by conflict but which acknowledged their skills and competence for managing conflict. Now she's delivering this paper tomorrow so I won't go into more detail about it but, but that should be a good advertisement. Jill should have more than 10 people in the English speaking group tomorrow I think. We'll see. Um, so by way of final comment, what I've tried to trace for you is a series of studies um, going uh, an Australian decade of 15 years, whereby girls can be, which show that girls can be very hurtful to each other. The aggression that they exhibit can be or is explained by various peer group processes. However, girls are also more constructive than boys in their resolution of conflict, and we have found that we can use narrative therapy practices that utilise group processes and the skills girls have to resolve their own conflicts and have more cooperative relationships. And I think I have finished in time for the most important tango show that's coming up. Thank you very much, everybody.